Radio.com. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. I'm Nathan Mum, your host and technologist with over 30 years of technology expertise. Our co-host here on my left, Mike Roday, is in studio. He's an award-winning author and our human behavior expert. Now, of course, we are live streaming during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, X, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit us online at techtimeradio.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash techtimeradio. We are friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible weekly for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We're glad to have ODR producer at the control panel today. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show... Today on Tech Time with Nathan One, we bring the latest buzz from the tech world straight to your ears. You can't Today, even get your name right, today, Nathan huh? Mum. No, Nathan Mum, registered trademark. There you go. Uh, we bring the latest buzz from the tech world straight to your ears. Today's lineup is brimming with the innovation and industry shakeups. First, Amazon just walked out on their technology and is taking a back seat as they introduce the Smart Dash Cart, redefining the convenience in grocery show, store shopping. But that's not all smooth sailing. Amazon is also scaling back with job cuts announced in its cloud computing giant AWS. On the roads, keep your eyes peeled for new traffic signs designed to catch distracted drivers red-handed. Meanwhile, TikTok isn't just about short videos anymore. They're setting their sights on the photo sharing throne, challenging Instagram with a new app, and will watch out YouTube as they look to take them on next. And in a high-stakes race for AI dominance, Apple is holding back. No longer. They have stepped up to the plate with R-E-A-L-M, which is also known as Realm, that promises to be a game changer in the realm of artificial intelligence. So stay tuned as we dive into the stories. Of course, Gwenway is back with a new gadget and gear that will make Gordon Ramsay silent. In addition, we have our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment, our technology fail of the week, and a possible Nathan Nugget, and of course, our pick of the day whiskey tasting to see if our selected whiskey pick today gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right, story number one. In the race to control AI dominancy, Apple steps up to the place with R-E-A-L-M, also known as Realm, but most people, in the way Apple announced it, is this R-E-A-L-M. ALM, so yeah, they want it to be uh, well. I know they want it to be kind of a mixture of the deal, but there you go. So we're now going to go to David Larson with more on the story. Apple AI researchers recently published a paper highlighting plans to supercharge Siri with nifty AI capabilities. Apple has been relatively quiet and rather slow hopping onto the AI bandwagon compared to its competitors like Microsoft. This has proven to be beneficial as Microsoft is the world's most valuable company with over $3 trillion in market capitalization. But Apple is about to enter the market with re-ALM. What are your thoughts back in the studio? All right. So according to tech experts, Apple's LLM, which is their, of course, their large language model. We talk about that a lot on this show. Yeah, that's essentially that's your, the big database, thing. right? That's the big database for oh, AIs I to search it. through. I got it. So we all know how I feel about AI mostly. How, well, for the right. new listeners or the joining in, how do you feel about AI, Mike? Uh, it really bothers me. Okay. Okay. But I have to say that it writes your scripts better than you do. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> all right. Well, according to Apple's LLM, uh, it's reportedly outperforming ChatGPT4 and Sam Altman, 
is already upset and says that it kind of sucks his current version that he has out there and that they have a brand new, better version just waiting to be released. So, so it doesn't suck. Well, it's not as good as the reference resolution as language modeling. That is the official term for Siri's new capability of using AI to process on screen content. Now, additional R E A L M will reportedly ship just with call the, it realm. Everybody wants it to be realm. Apple wants it to be realm. They they want it to be realm. Okay, okay. Additionally, realm. Okay, additionally, realm will reportedly ship with the capability of converting conversational on screen and text formats to large language models per a research paper that was released just two weeks ago. Based on their findings, Apple's smallest AI model showcased the similar performances when compared to OpenAI's ChatGPT4. According to the researchers, they ran a benchmark of Apple's new AI tool set against OpenAI's 3.5 and their four models. Based on their finding, Apple's smallest AI module, which would be in like your phone, showcased a similar performance as OpenAI's GPT-4. Essentially, the smaller model will enable the units to be shipped on Apple's possibly iOS 18 with an update and the soon-to-be-launched new lines of iPhones. So now, they, so Apple's been very quiet, right, about AI. They kept on calling it everything other than AI. Now they're coming on out saying, okay, we're going to get into the AI race. They're going to use Siri, which makes sense, right? You ask Siri for directions. You ask it for this. It's going to go into their language model so I can now have a conversation kind of like I do my Alexa device. Alexa is really good about this. You can have kind of Alexa do this, Alexa do this, Alexa turn off the lights. Yeah, Alexa, turn yeah on but the you TV. can't say, hey, Alexa, how's it going? And have a conversation. No, you have to ask it a question. You're and right. some of the questions or most of the questions I ask Alexa, she's like, well, I don't know that one. Oh, she, okay, well, you know what? I'm sure they're going to have to get up into the game too because, you know, Zuckerberg, is it going to be crying after he hears our fourth story today? So oh he's, no, he's going to be a little bit upset. We so. don't want Zuckerberg crying. Uh, do, do we really care too much about it? Not really. Okay, all right. Go. Cool. Well, how about go to story number two? Okay. Well, buckle up. Okay. Especially, especially you. <laughs> well, why especially me? New traffic signs might catch you looking at your phone and other things. Oh. Okay. Explain a little bit about that. What, well, what, what, guess what? Uh, going on right here in Seattle's King County. Okay. Uh, they are testing new smart signs that use infrared signals to detect unsafe driver behavior. Okay. Such as holding a cell phone or not wearing a seatbelt. I don't know, you know, if it's like <laughs> eating a burger so, or whatever. So, so they have technology for cell phone looking and seatbelts? Yeah. Oh, boy. And, you know, you know, like those those uh, things on the side of the road that, that uh, tell you speed. if you're speeding? Yeah. It, uh, it does that, too. Okay, it tells you if you're speeding also. Yeah, so officials say the signs don't take photographs or collect personal information, which hmm. I'm not sure how that's going to work out quite yet. So they're never going to take a photo of my license plate when I drive by it because they already have those photos. Yeah, they always have those already. Yeah, okay. traffic, traffic Lab is a Seattle Times project that is investigating the region's transportation issues to explore the policies and politics that determine how we get around and how billions of dollars of public money is being spent. If you use your phone while you're driving, don't buckle your seatbelt or speed. Just know this road signs will be watching and collecting. It sounds like this is a data collection thing. Okay. Yeah. But they, you know, our source wasn't quite clear because it does say, hey, if your phone's out, you might get a message that say, put your phone down. On the big little little bleeping sign on the I, side. I guess, which, okay. you know, if you're looking at your phone, you're not looking at the sign. So I don't know how that, <laughs> unless it has something like, like so that some, is true. So if I'm texting have, on my phone, it should have it, it says, should have somebody like yell at you, yell at you, or like yeah. zap you in, into your car. No, no, no. Can you imagine that we use the, the all these AI things now yeah. to yell at you in different voices? Okay, okay. So it'd be like, put your phone down. Okay. <laughs> like like the old lady on the yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's on the get old, off my lawn. Get off the lawn, lady. Okay, all right. So technically, they may be sensing sending infrared signals into your car to detect the unsafe behavior and then issuing a stern warning. Each sign promises to detect such unsafe behavior and adapt to target specific behavior. So they'll, they'll, I guess they'll somehow know it's you driving by. How would they know that? And without, taking I don't know in, without having every, personal information. I, I can imagine it. you driving by every road sign and be put your seatbelt on Nathan. <laughs> 
Are you saying that I have a problem putting my seatbelt on? Uh, you admittedly have a problem uh, putting yourself. I sometimes, I sometimes, I need to do a better job of putting my seatbelt on because that's very important in today's world to make sure you're. I wonder what it will do with smoking in your car. I wonder if that's a thing. Is it smoking? Yeah, I think I think you can smoke in your anything car, right? that you do in your car that's not driving is actually distracted driving, okay. eating, drinking. How about those listening devices to every playing Monopoly? How about those new car the all the new cars from two thousand pl- or two thousand and twenty plus that are spying on you? Are that they we did the story that we did yeah. the story on that your your insurance? Yeah, this is whatever. This okay, is, I hate that stuff. Okay, all right. Technology has become an increasingly favorite tool for combating speeding and reckless driving. The Washington legislature has expanded local cities' authority to use traffic cameras in and around school zones, bus lanes, intersections, and other areas deemed uniquely unsafe. Seattle recently agreed to roll out the cameras to catch people drag racing. Surveillance, because hmm. yeah, that uh, that's, apparently, that that's apparently a problem here in the Pacific Northwest, which I was really kind of in awe about. Ah, uh, no, I, I used to do that back in high school. Uh, well, I think they do it everywhere, Why but there's no res- there's no straight roads here. <laughs> <What? laughs> Why would you used you... to race cars on the from the flats of Everett to Marysville where there's I was no, growing there's up. There's no I straight mean, roads. You, you get to, yeah, yes. you you get up to ninety, a hundred. I'm gonna get my good old Chevy Monte Carlo. Oh yeah. Listen to you talking about your the Chevy. Do you remember the Hot Wheels collection? You, you remember the Monte Carlo? I had a I had a boat. Yeah, I remember Monte, the Monte, I, Monte 1979 Carlo. 1979 Monte Carlo. Was it an SS? And it was not. No, no I only had it wasn't worth my time. So I only had the 305, not the 350. Surveillance concerns remain real, so traffic cameras are strictly limited in what information they can provide. Smart signs do not have cameras. Okay. And the county coalition promises no personal information can be gleaned from the radio like technology. There is no enforcement component right now, so drivers won't be ticketed. They're just simply going to be warned. Okay. So now hang on. There has to be some type of positive uh, type of deal because they're just going to tell you negative stuff. That doesn't fit into well, our. Apparently. Yeah. If the sign detects that drivers are focused, buckled up, and not speeding, it will smash us. Uh, flash of a smiley face. At oh, okay. There you go. That and makes reward sense. them and oh. refor- so I get, like, reinforces PowerPoints, you. For, I get PowerPoints. Upgrade. I don't know. I get like 500 of those and I can then go and, 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 and buy oh, a traffic home. Isn't that kind of hoping that you get sort of, uh, what do you call it? It's it's what an it's that? it's behavioral it's, it's behavioral yeah. modification. But what's the word for it? Reinforcement. Yeah, positive yeah, reinforcement. Positive reinforcement. And see that yes, would, that this would work can, on me. This can work to an extent. Those those speeding signs, the the I love it because it comes on with a little yeah, siren tells, when you go too quick. It, yeah, it flashes it tells, at it, it and then it does a siren little thing. If you so that around. uses that uses things like um uh social cues to make you speed down but the problem is is another cognitive problem which is called situational blindness okay and uh awareness or or alarm fatigue so you'll get tired of seeing it and it won't make that much difference so initially i think probably what will happen is that uh this will create some sort of nudge which is what this uses is nudge psychology and then the nexus will go down and then so it'll, it'll go it'll down again because successful. everybody will start everybody will start ignoring it okay. all right well that was a positive story i'm excited about that no you're not well <laughs> you are so not i i just got to make sure that if i'm only driving with my one leg and I'm you're gonna, at my phone yeah, you're gonna, and you're no gonna find, you're gonna the, the find how many gonna, messages it, they, it, they it, can it, flash yeah. at you at one time. You're gonna be like driving with your, you oh, wear your seatbelt and make sure you're not a distracted driver. Okay, Odie, do you have a story? Yeah, PSA, yeah, PSA I have from. A story. <laughs> that's my PSA. Um, you know those walkout Amazon stores? Yeah, so just that's all fake. <laughs> it's all fake. That's all fake. What do you mean it's it's fake. all fake. Well, it's not. You know, I thought it was some high tech thing, and I thought that was really cool. It's not. It's just a bunch of people outsourced in India that are constantly watching your every move through all the mini cameras inside the store that then tally everything that you put away or grab, and then they send it to you. That's so, why it takes so long to get a receipt. So you're telling me, mm-hmm. which which was which is, has been, if it were like uh, busted or truth and well, busted, when this came out. They yeah. said that this had all this high tech stuff yes, going that's on. What that's, I it, that's that's how that's Amazon that's sold it. Too. Yep, and it essentially it was a bunch of people in India, yeah, outsourced that were watching you on closed circuit TVs, cameras, and then they would decide with that great technology what they needed to be done. So essentially, it was more 
cost effective mm-hmm. to hire India people right. to do this type of stuff than actually well, develop a technology that really knew what you were doing. not, though, because now they're rolling out these smart shopping carts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in, they're going to replace all yeah, the... That's dumb. All the walkout, no more walkout. They're going to be slow. Yeah, so all the walkouts have stopped, right? Mm-hmm. So we can no longer have that technology because the India people revolted. Right. Okay? I got right. you. And instead, Did they? Yeah. That was kind of how, it, that's how it leaked. That's how it leaked and yeah. they got upset. And yeah. instead, they're going to have smart shopping carts, which I don't know if you've seen at the Whole Foods, but you kind of just sign yeah, in. They check. They're dumb. They have they're, a scale. They're dumb. <laughs> they have a I, camera. I've, I've, I've seen them screen. in stores. They're they're another stupid <laughs> well way so this is like amazon using. just think of this as a captive audience when you grab one of those carts mm-hmm. they could just pump you with amazon prime promos yeah by the 30 minutes that you're shopping there that you're going to go home and you're going to want to watch everything you're going to watch the well they had this the they Lord had this the thing Rings, there, yeah you want to watch this you're going to watch that they, all, they, all had, their ads. they had this thing and they were testing out in one of the grocery stores that i went into yeah and you use the cart and it has a scanner on the cart and yeah. a weight on. Yeah, that's the same thing that she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking and then about. you just pay at the cart. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the same thing. Same, same thing here. Yeah. Okay, that's dumb. <laughs> How's that dumb? How's that dumb? Because if uh, if I thinking. if I'm going to if I'm going to what? No, explain it. Think well, about, think about it. Think about, just think about it what? for a moment. Okay. If you put stuff in your cart and you don't scan it, or you put something under the cart that you don't scan. Yeah. But there's there's a and scale. then you walk out, yeah, with the Listen, cart. Theft is already a thing. Okay, that's you're another just, reason you're that you're just gonna you're just gonna shoot it I down. Mean, they, they, we already dumb. have we already have the okay. walk yeah. out lanes where they they have the self check self checkout. Yeah, I, I told you I saw someone had steaks. He, he, was, wait, every, he was waiting in line yeah. more than five minutes. We all and he know said, that. Screw already. it, it's free. He just walks right on out. He had steaks and they're not some alcohol. I used to have a buddy who would go in for lunch at at a local Safeway. And he would get all this stuff, and then he would actually go through and pay for the soda. Yeah, and that's it. Jeez, well, you know what? He, he, at least he was paying for something. <laughs> the uh, bare minimum. But I, I don't. I I didn't find this to be a really helpful thing for my shopping experience. All right. So, so. as a consumer, are you excited about smart carts? You know, I've seen them at the Whole Foods, and I just don't trust it. You don't, don't trust it. I don't trust it. I don't want to go through the hassle because. You have to scan. You have to sign in, essentially. Yeah, and you have to put your credit card in. Yeah, or you have to put in your bank card. What? I don't so you have put to it do that when I go to self checkout. Or you can all, or already can already log in with your Amazon Prime account. So if you already have an Amazon account, you yeah. can go and you can Which, log in. By the way, that's yeah. that's freaking weird. How they just know the image of my palm. Yeah. And that they have. Oh, all you my saw that too, huh? Yeah. My sister hates that. Yeah, a lot of people are freak. A lot of people freak out about stuff like I that. I still did it because you know that you sounds cool, okay. but I don't trust that. Now, yeah. what are they going to do with the image of my palm? What What are they going to do with that? Well, someone will, some, some will hack into you're, it. You're buying a lot of stuff on the dark web that you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. Well, here you go. Story number four. Let's Let's talk about Mark. TikTok confirmed that it has a working on an app specifically to take out everything remaining in meta. All right, so let's go and take a look to our correspondent and see what he has to think about this. TikTok is preparing to launch a new photo sharing app to compete with Instagram. Recently, TikTok users have received pop-up notifications that their existing photo posts will be shared on the new app, which will be called TikTok Notes. The news comes as TikTok faces a number of obstacles, including a potential ban in the U.S. But that has not stopped TikTok as it is now the social media leader in the world, with 46% of the market share passing Meta last month. Okay, Tech Timers, who picked TikTok to overtake Meta this year in the prediction show? I think we both did. I think we all did. Did did, did, did Odie get that question? I said that they would actually take it. I said no. You said no? Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. Which... I didn't know that they were doing all this. I wasn't <laughs> cheating. Well, okay. they're not cheating. Essentially, TikTok so, now is coming on out with TikTok Notes, as they just talked about there. TikTok Notes is essentially the Instagram, but no longer on say, the on the Meta platform. I am so thankful that they're doing that because literally fa- Meta, everyone, they all just copy each other. Yeah. So I'm glad that they're finally coming out with this. Well, you know what? TikTok is not starting there, and the company ByteDance is specifically working on a player that would be able to load more 
videos and longer videos that you could categorize up to 30 minutes, maybe up to two hours that would look pretty much like YouTube and be able to compete in that space as they're working on code right now. You know what? Now, TikTok's also experimenting with a th with text posts to compete with this company called X and Threads. So ByteDance has said every social media company out there, we you know now what? own it. I congratulate them. I, 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 I'm ready for why, it. Why? I'm ready to be on there just spending all my days. All your time on TikTok. Time You're on. just going to become a TikToker, <laughs> huh? Well, yes. it's, well no. it's, so now you're going to have Facebook and you're going to have TikTok. You're going to have two alternatives. Yeah. Well, so guess what? Facebook I, better step I, up I the game. I don't know that I don't know that Facebook has much left in them. They really there, don't. There, there's no, a no. there's a cycle to these things. And I think Facebook or slash meta has run it. Yeah, I do. Now, they're of course, I, I think I think they're in trouble. All right. There you go. Well, that is our top technology stories of the week. Moving on. Gwenway is up with our gadgets and gear segment with a product that needs some help. Coming to the market, she's excited about. What makes this product unique? You can only find that out next when Gwen Ray joins us. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. See you after this commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives and let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200 or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest, new ideas, new solutions. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Our weekly show covers the top technology subjects without any political agenda. We verify the facts, and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And of course, with a little whiskey on the side. Today, Mark Gregoire, a whiskey connoisseur, is not in the studio. So Odie is filling in a spot for our whiskey. Uh, Odie, what has Mark chosen for us today? Um, Wherever you are, Mark, screw you, first of all. And then, oh wow! <laughs> well, wow. You should, you, you, right you, off the bat, yeah, this, right. is, this is the producer. Oh, yeah. wow. Mark Mumbles. You didn't is... see her face. No, thank you. I, I have did. a witness. She she did not like this. No. Okay. Well, I, I'm not well, saying anything. Oh, yet. You, you I were think, like, ah. I think it. I think, is... think as soon as you said you liked it, we were all like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is the Distillerium Cask and Spin Triticale Batch One. Okay. Um, from the website directly, this is a whiskey with a story when every sip captures the spirit of the rodeo spin. Ooh. Our journey begins with locally grown triticale grain, known for its robust and distinctive flavor. Ignite your senses with a dance of rich caramel and a crackle of spice. Cask and spin the intricate footwork of a reigning horse performance daring you to savor the untamed spirit of the American West in every sip. Yeah, I think stats. it's I think it's useful for somebody who's right. been spinning on a horses to drink this one. <laughs> to drink this. So how, what's the proof of this? How much does it cost? Okay, listen. So it's four years old. Okay. It's a 116 proof. Oh. The mash bill is 95% triticale and 5% malted barley. Okay. Goes for $48. Oh. And it's from Yakima. Oh, okay. Which I was, oh, 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 I was excited for a local okay. whiskey. Well, have you tasted Woodenville whiskey? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're they're not they're not Tennessee bourbons. Yeah, there's something about the whole idea of Kentucky and Tennessee they're, where they actually make this stuff and Pacific they've been doing North, it. They're they're almost can Canada. They're can stuff. Uh, oh, Canadian oh. stuff. Wow. No, no, no. It's just you I know mean, what? we're near the border. Right so now. we make really good wines up here and we make some good coffee. We got the apples. I mean, I Yeah, because we have good that. apples. Yeah, I don't know if we're good wine people, I'm but I'm not sure about this. I, I I do I do like this though. Yeah, you like it. I do. I, I think it has a nice. So look far, so Man. far, I don't like it, and okay. she definitely doesn't. Whoa, like whoa, whoa, whoa! It's too early. Maybe by oh. the end of my shot glass, I'll like it. Yeah, okay. maybe. But maybe. the face, the face, you, your face <laughs> almost completely <laughs> fell off your skull when you took it. Did look like it was. It did look like she was like, oh, that was the worst. Yeah, thing it was. Well, is, it, is it triticale or triticale? I don't know. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm reading it as it is. It's triticali, maybe. Maybe triticali. I, I I'll say it, triticali. That's okay. that sounds better than okay, triticale. I'll say okay. triticali. There you go. Okay. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Okay. We're waiting to hear what y'all think about it. All right, there you go. This is this is local Yakima. So mm -hmm. if you're in the Pacific Northwest and you've tasted this before, let us know. If you haven't and you're listening across all of our stations from the East Coast to the West, let us know if you would like to find the location because I'm sure to local Yakima winery slash distillery that's available to purchase those items also. Well, with our first whiskey tasting completed, let's move on to our feature segment. Today we have Gwen Way joining the show. She's an expert in cybersecurity during the day and a game board geek in the evenings, as well as a producer of the Tech Time Radio show itself. We have our gadgets and gear gal ready. Let's start our Comcast video stream now. What's new in our gadgets and gear? All right, Gwen, welcome to the show. Always happy to be here. All right. So before we dive into the gadget, yesterday at the production meeting, there was a story you pitched. You pitched like eight of them, like the great person. Gwen always produces the most of the pitch stories that she does. And you know what? If you look at the percentage of them, we don't always use them, but they are always the best. And when you're not there, like if you miss a night, then all of a sudden we're all scrambling around saying, where's Gwen? But this was a story you talked about regarding the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, warns that hackers are now using social engineering tactics to target IT help desks across the healthcare and public health sector. Yep. said that you had a specific incident that you're actually working on or that you worked with. Tell us a little bit about what's going on here and how uh, people can protect themselves in this space. We've actually seen quite a bit of this kind of social engineering uh, and especially in healthcare situations. Uh, one of the easiest things for a hacker to do is pretend to be a doctor who is trying to save lives and locked out of their account. And they'll call IT and just shout at the IT person until they reset the account with a password that that hacker can then use. Uh, that makes sense. So you say you're a doctor. Yeah. You got. I'm out of my account. I have this person here. They're a patient. I need to they be here. They do this on TV all the time. They do. <laughs> yeah. So then all of a sudden they, you just get that password because the poor, the poor help desk guy doesn't want someone to die or anything like that. So all of a sudden he gives it away and boom. Most likely the poor help desk guy doesn't want to get in trouble. Yes, he does not. Because he I just mean, wants to it, he just wants to do his job, help people go home and play video games. Exactly. I mean, that's ninety percent of what IT people want to do. They want to help people? They want to help, yes. By na by nature. I don't understand that concept because where I work, they seem to not want to help people. Well, they want to make it hard for you to do your job. You, by but giving. you work for a state company, right? That's, yeah. that's a okay. Work. It's, it's a <laughs> work for a government agency. Okay. <laughs> what did they take away today? What did they take away? They didn't take it away today. Okay. Uh, but they they disallow Siri on our on our phones. Okay. Are you so, so you, you can't I, have your phone. Can't have Siri on it. Yeah. And I don't know why. There's no. I don't reason know for why it. either. Okay. But okay. Well. Well. There you go. All right. Maybe All it's right. Okay. to the whole uh, you know spying thing, and you can't have Furbies in government agencies still okay. to this day. Yeah. Yeah, although of all the apps you're talking about to be safe with, you know what, Siri's pretty safe. I mean, you got a lot of other stuff out there that I'd be worrying about, but clearly your IT team made a good I, I don't know. We kind of live in the dark ages when it comes to IT. So that must be a struggle for you, being on our technology show and then having to hear the IT stuff there. Do you sometimes just uh, shake your head or what happens to you? Uh, I rage a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when I, when I, I have to try and deal with something that... I, is clearly something that modern day technology can handle okay. and it won't. Okay. All right. Well, Gwen, thank you so much for letting us know about that. Let's move on to our gadget. All right. So what do we have for our listeners today? So this goes back to the root of Kickstarter for me. I think a lot of the things that we've been focusing on are produced by larger companies that actually have backing already and are just looking for additional crowdsourced. Uh, backing. Mm -hmm. But this is legitimately a programmer sitting in his kitchen with a problem that he wanted to solve. Okay. Uh, the device is called AI Cooking Assistant. As I okay. stated, it's on Kickstarter and it is pretty much exactly what it says it is. This is something that will display recipes, help you find recipes, read recipes out to you if it's easier while you're cooking, and just generally provide you information in the kitchen that you might like to have. Okay. 
Um, um, so, t- so mm-hmm. tell me, uh, so, so I saw this video and I, uh, and I was like, Oh man, but it's right. after I did a little bit more research, cause it, cause it's very, uh, what do you want to say? Rudimentary. I mean, it's very, Yeah, you were all, you were all about the, uh, optics of the whole thing. Because yeah, so it's, un- it's, it's just an undeveloped technology technology. So this guy has an idea and he is a developer and he definitely tells the developer, but as I started, I actually did a little bit more Google search on this guy. And he is just kind of a nerdy guy that's coming up with an idea and he's hoping to get enough funding for this product so he can actually make it. He's very comfortable and confident. He can use AI, whether that's a free version of ChatGPT 3.5 or a paid version of one of the other large language models to create what he's looking to do. And he's just, he's, he had last night three backers, right? So he's, he's a little bit on the beginning of this, but he has, he has a dream and if it comes to fruition and he actually gets enough backers, I think this is actually something that could be really good. So tell us a little bit more. How many backers is there now? How much does this cost? Where do you want to go? And a little bit about this, Quinn. Sure. So we're still sitting at about three backers, but we have until May the 3rd. So okay. if anybody else wants to help make this gentleman's dream come true, hop on that. Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about this, you know, I've, I've got a Google home device in my own kitchen that I use for similar things, but of course being a Google device, it's gathering all kinds of information on me. Uh, this gentleman's device doesn't really do that because what's he going to do without any information about what you're cooking? Uh, so it's a little safer, a little less big brothery, which I think is a very good thing. Uh, well, but- also. Mm-hmm. I hope it will actually display a menu because I I do the same thing. I have a, uh, when I'm in the kitchen, I'm trying to cook something and I Google something. Oh my God. Just trying to find the, the recipe is like digging through. Yeah, there is hours and like hours of stuff. Recipes. Two years worth of life story yeah. that you have to scroll. Through. Yeah. In fact, they started putting little touch buttons that say jump to recipe because there's all this stuff stupid stuff that goes yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, like recipe. The, there's a lot of recipe sites out there where people comment. They, yeah, and they then it becomes comments a, a on it. They, they, they tell you how awesome it is and they tell you why it's awesome. They tell you where it came from and like, no, just tell me how to heat this up so I can eat. Okay. Exactly. okay. So, that was more so yeah, specifically focuses on the recipe. So it takes a lot of that out of it. Um, the, the AI right now is being programmed to go to sites and just pull the recipe out specifically so that you don't have to listen to, you know, this this woman talk about her grandmother's dog who taught her grandmother how to cook potatoes or whatever. <laughs> so this is a much more positive experience in general. And I think I think it's a good product, honestly. It's a brilliant idea. This gentleman is out of Modesto, California. Okay. So he's okay. in the US. Um Normally, with a first project, and especially a first project for somebody who has not, who who doesn't have corporate backing. So yep. I mean, he filmed it on his kitchen counter, right? Exactly. Okay. You, you kind of want to be a little careful with that. But nine times out of 10, those are the ones that end up being the coolest products and the most out of the box. That's so that's correct. kind of why I wanted to pull this one forward. Obviously, do your due diligence, just like Nathan did, where he looked into the guy, making sure that he's not a scam artist. He's really just a programmer who wanted to do something nice. And so he's a nerdy guy that wants to find recipes and help people to find recipes in a little tablet. Now, what's really great about Kickstarter is it's an all or nothing platform, right? So if you go and you fund it, and let's say they only get 100 people and he doesn't reach the funding that he needs to to do his project, you get all that money back. So you're not in jeopardy of something where they say they're going to do something and they don't. This isn't a company that's overseas or, or and they have a real flashy video that comes on out and collects money. And I've gotten uh, two or three Kickstarter events and always put it on your credit card because you can yeah. call up your, your credit card and get a full refund on Kickstarter, even though they say they don't because you still haven't delivered the product. So the key is, is if you put it on your credit card, not your bank card, your ACH payment, none of those type of stuff, but put it on a credit card. You can go and get refunded. Um, this guy, though, is legit. I mean, I, this yeah. guy is, if he's going to make this product, um, he's probably really going to make this product. He had a phone and a camera, and he kind of showed how the object linking did stuff. So, I mean, he, he 
he has a dream and and Gwen has absolutely fallen for this product. And what is the product again and where can they find it for everybody else? It's called AI Cooking Assistant. It's okay. available on Kickstarter. You can just search by that. There are two sizes. There's a seven inch that you can get now for $399 and a 10 inch screen for $499. I'll probably go the 10 inch if I'm going to do that. Oh, right? yeah. I, want, I want those couple extra inches. Exactly. Now, does, it, now, does it make you a better cook? That is the question. That... I don't know that it'll make you a better cook, but it is certainly less likely to let you burn things if it's reading the instructions to you out loud and you're not having to look away from the food to read them yourself. That's actually kind of a benefit. Yeah. Looking at having, because anybody can find a recipe there and then you got to go back to it. So if it says now put in two cups and you do say next or something like that. Now put in. So it talks butter. to you. Yeah. So if it would talk so to me. What do you need those extra inches for? <laughs> the, <laughs> the screen. Extra inches on the screen itself. Okay. All right. Wow. 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 Okay. Gwen, any other things that you want, want to talk about to help this guy get his, his, his funding? Let me ask you this. Have you funded him yet? I have not, but it is happening in about 30 minutes. I okay. am getting a new credit card and I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail. Okay. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so I, I am excited. I, I did get a product that we had on uh, episode six of our show. Yeah, finally. Yeah, I finally came. And, and so I haven't gotten out of the box yet, but I'm going to do a review of that next week. It's called the Quill fighting device. I thought you said it was pretty bad. Well, it, so I have, I have not played with it yet. I've opened it up and took a look at it. So we're, we'll, we'll do that. And, and have that available. Okay, Gwen, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you talk about new gadgets, and we will see you in three weeks, but I'll see you next week on our production meeting. Sounds good. Thanks, Gwen. All right, that ends our gadgets and gear segment with Gwen. Up next, we have This Week in Technology, so now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we're going to be doing so during the break. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. See you in a few minutes. Join the fun and grab tickets to GeekFest West, the three-day Geek Festival extravaganza of fun and entertainment that will take place on the third weekend in July. Learn more at geekfest.com. GeekFest will feature diverse activities, including a film festival, vendor hall, street fair, outdoor music festival, cosmic cosplay, and video game tournaments. Join us at GeekFest West, the ultimate celebration of geek culture. To learn more, visit geekfest.com. That is geekfest.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, we're going to the Wayback Machine here. We got April 6, 1992. Microsoft releases Windows 3.1. Now, Microsoft Corporation released the operating system Windows 3.1 as a system that provided IBM and IBM compatible PCs with a graphical user interface. Through Windows was not, though, the first such interface for PCs. It was the mainstay of the Intel product to be used. The retail price was $149. And replacing the previous DOS command interface with the Windows system, however, Microsoft created a program similar to what the Macintosh operating system was offering and was then later sued by Apple for copyright infringement. Microsoft, though, did prevail in the lawsuit. Now, Windows 3.1 added multimedia extensions allowing support for sound cards not that pc speaker any longer you could have a sound card it had midi and cd audio you could have super a super vga a super vga monitor that did 800 by 600 uh screen of resolution and then the increased speed of the modem would then support 9600 Bots yeah, per second. I remember that. Yes, 9600. 9, Woo, instead of that 1200 and the 2400 That's right, 2400. screaming. All right, also abandoned into the real mode, a virtual environment dating back into the 8086 CPU. It provided the scalability fonts and created the three-finger salute, Control-Alt-Delete, prompting the users to avoid inadvertent reboots. It also refined, which is probably the most important thing ever, it created the concept of having the user be able to cut and paste between applications. How, many, how, how often do you use cut and paste? Oh, that's that's I use it all the time. And control C, Control V. I mean, it is like the, the staple. This was the first time that it was available for people to use. Well, that was this week in technology. If you ever want to watch some tech time history, with over two hundred weekly broadcasts, this is episode two hundred, spanning four plus years of videos 
podcasts and blog information. You can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows. We're going to take a commercial break, but when we return, we have the Mark Mumble Whiskey Review. See you in a second. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. All All right, Mark. Not a pessimist. All right, what do we anyway, got? Do you want to know what today's day is? What is today's day okay. and Mark's day? Do you want to guess? It's no. an animal. It's an animal. Yeah, it's an animal. Is it National Pig's Day? No, no, no. It's an imaginary animal. Oh, it's imaginary. It's unicorn animal. Day. Oh! Oh, you cheated. No, I didn't. I, oh. You just said imaginary, imaginary animal. animal. Yeah. That's the first thing that everybody talks about is freaking unicorns. Yeah. It's and unicorn it kind day. of goes in with our whiskey. Okay. But... Yeah, so today is National Unicorn Day. So today is a day to celebrate the most popular mythical creature ever. Okay. Why? Because if we do not take time out to celebrate a beautiful, horned, rainbow-printed mythical creature, then we are most definitely missing out in life. The unicorn is an icon of color, of childlike splendor and magic. This sounds like something right up Nathan's and especially Mike's alley to delve into the magnificent of unicorns well, okay i don't why is it my alley you know what i mean i like i i, I, mean, I put this. them with uh he really copy and pasted a lot of this stuff because I, I, I know he, he didn't come up with that on his own day okay oh right. i have a magical day every day <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right right and what better way to celebrate tech times 200th episode than with unicorn whiskey oh okay is this unicorn whiskey no but that's what he's calling it in the <laughs> <laughs> well it might be unicorn whiskey because it's gross <laughs> in the whiskey world a unicorn bottle is something rare and usually expensive for the distillery distillerium cask and spin triticale it is not expensive but it is fairly unique it is made with 95 percent triticale grain and triticale is a hybrid of wheat and rye that explains so much that it's is a, wheat a high, and rye. wheat and rye Combo. whiskey. Okay. Uh, and Anything first else? bred in the laboratories during the late 19th century in Scotland and Germany. Only recently has it been developed into a commercially visible crop. Mark found this whiskey to be quite different and exciting. It comes on initially with a wave of delicious warm spices. Oh, I feel it. Yeah. Dried fig and a hint of black tea reminding mm-hmm. Mark of a rye. Mm-hmm. Just as those flavors hit their peak, it then transitions to a soft, delicate, sugary, and caramel sweetness mm-hmm. remnants of a wheat whiskey. Mm-hmm. When Mark is looking for something a little different and with the flavors he loves, this is what he reaches for. Mm-hmm. Mark and I are on the same palate. Wow. Yeah. That's unusual. I know. I, I, I know. I, I, I am liking this. I said it was pretty good. All right. Well, it might be because you're like her. You're, you're well, just liking the after effects. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I like mean, it. it's 116. Yeah, I mean, it's got some kick. It's got some kick. Yeah, Absolutely. no kidding. It's got a horse kick. That's right. <laughs> or a unicorn kick, <laughs> I guess. Mark, thanks for that mumble. Uh, of course, whiskey and technology. What a great pairing. Just like Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire, the Oakland A's Bash Brothers back in the 80s and 90s. You remember them? No. You don't remember the Bash no, Brothers? Not at all. Uh, baseball? Okay. Not at Do you remember all. the Bash Brothers? Does Ma- Does Mike look like he likes baseball? Well, I don't. It's a baseball. I used to play baseball. You used to play baseball? Yeah. What oh. position did you play? I was a pitcher. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you were the starter. Pitcher in second base. All right. Okay. Okay. You know why you play you second base? I played second base. Yeah. You know why I play second base? Why? Because you don't have an arm enough to throw from third across. Oh. That's why I played it because my that, arm... That's not why I played it. Why did you play it? I played it because that was my position. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Let's now move to our technology fail. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. Here goes our technology fail. What do you do when your e bike becomes a pillar of fire and smoke? Well, you now we've talked about we, that e-bike. You know what, we've talked about this. This is our 200th episode. 
We've talked about this all the way back in like episode five and six. So clearly e-bikes and batteries have been around for quite a while now. But guess what happens? Over in the UK, fire crews were called to an e-bike fire at a railroad station described as a ferocious blaze that could have had a trajectory and tragic oh, consequences. That would, that would be tragic, buddy. Now, the bike exploded at Sutton train station during the rush hour on the 21st of March. Station officer Nigel McLachlan. That's Nigel McLaughlin. Nigel? McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Okay, McLaughlin. Said that the owners had... Man, my eyes are a little blurry. I think it must be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably had, the, had bought the e-bike the from an online uh, marketplace four months previously with no apparent issues since. The incident only serves to highlight that it's very important to get these products from a reputable street high-end seller so you do not have to worry about what happens. If an item is brought from an online marketplace, there is more risk. It will be sold without the correct battery and charger, which can lead to a devastating fire. E-bike and e-scooter fires are the fastest growing fire risk in London. Statistics indicate that they've had at least 40 this year. Note to the consumers, if you purchase an e-bike, spend a few bucks more on a tested and verified company that has been in the industry a number of years before you get that discount e-bike. Otherwise, it just might go up in smoke. Though, you know, it was really cool watching it explode. It was really cool. So you can just go and look at e-bike explosion. I mean, and that sucker, you can tell it was not uh, altered footage. It was absolutely from a street cam uh, in the subway area that it has because it starts the fire and then it just blows and the smoke goes and you got sparks and stuff flying out all over everywhere. Well, we're going to head out to our last commercial break. When we return, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment. Brought to us by Story Cosby and a possible Nathan Nugget of the Week. And, of course, our pick of the day. So sit back, raise a glass. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog. Collected writings for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle. Print copies available on Amazon The Book Pository and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, here's your mesmerizing moment question of the day. Now, I know that you like motorcycles. You had a motorcycle, right? I did have a motorcycle. And e-bikes are coming out. My son just bought an e-bike. He just bought it from a neighbor next door. Uh, is it so, the same neighbor? Yeah, so say you, you know okay. who it is. It's, yeah. um, so it's this is it's a nice guy, literally it's a guy. Um, so um, I want my bike back. Yeah, <laughs> you bought your bike from me too. Um, so essentially, would you buy yourself an e-bike since you're a motorcycle driver with all the new technologies that are today? Let's not talk about the low end e-bike that we just talked about in our technology fail that blew up. But one of these higher end e-bikes, would you drive around that nope. around the town? No. Nope. Why would why would you not, or why would you? Uh, well, for one, we talk about the batteries exploding. Okay, right. So don't need to have that happen. I already lost a bike in a fire. I don't need to have another one. Okay, that's valid. Uh, for another, it's just like I don't own a why I don't own an electric car. Okay, you know the the infrastructure really isn't there. It doesn't allow me to. How far can an e bike could drive? This is like 36 miles until the charge. That's the one that he got. I, yeah, okay. That's 36 miles. So I want something that's going to take me at least 100 miles. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's higher end e bikes and probably get you up to 100. I've never even thought about it, but just asking me that question is. There's no. No, I'm right. not going to. I wouldn't buy one. Okay. No, that's, uh, Odie, would you buy an e bike? Well, yeah, I would. Okay. Would you? Yeah. I If I lived in the city, which I kind of do, I would. Okay. You know, Mike lives out in i don't want to say the boonies but it's not pretty far. Boonies enough yeah, yeah. when your commute here your guys's commute here is pretty far i yeah. it doesn't make sense to have an e-bike okay. but me that lives you know in a closer to the seattle that makes sense yeah if you're tooling around in the city i'm yeah I'm it makes sure it easy to park too, better, yeah better than a car you save on gas yeah you, you can have park to charge it just it. up on the sidewalk Mm-hmm. Is it is it uh, something you can charge at these charging stations that no. Tesla? No, no, so no have have charge, that's specifically cars. You'd have to do it at home. There you go. <laughs> but you know what? You could probably come up with a 
adapter that plugs into that car and you can put it up on a Kickstarter and then we can fund the Mike yeah, mesmer- no, the no, Mike no, mesmerizing no. idea. All right, let's now move to the Nathan Nugget. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, so sometimes my nuggets are informal and sometimes they're rants. You're always ranting. Well, it's today, always a rant. So, so to my rant is going to be today specifically to a company. Now, we talked about uh, Amazon. The Amazon Watch. No. What do they call those? What do they call those Amazon Go stores, right? Yeah, they, we talked about the Amazon Yeah, they store. just walk out. You yeah. just walk out stores. So now, big blastering news all over the areas. Amazon is essentially laying off a part of their AWS cloud computing unit. Now, at the same time, I looked at this this morning. There are over 10,000 open jobs at Amazon right now that you can apply for. Probably in their fulfillment centers. They're all over the platform, from fulfillment centers to C-level suite individuals that you can apply for online at amazon.com forward slash careers. You can go and take a look at Everything is available, but then they are laying off engineers. And Amazon said Wednesday it's cutting hundreds of jobs in its cloud computing unit, AWS, as part of a strategic shift. The company will trim a few hundred roles on the team that overlook technologies for physical stores, maybe the people that were supervising the people over in India, a move that comes just days after Amazon said it was ditching its just walkout technology in its U.S. grocery stores. In addition to the physical stores technology team, Amazon said it's cutting several hundred roles in the AWS sales, marketing, and global service organizations. Most of these cuts are related to business changes in AWS's training and certification programs, as well as sales operations. The tech giant said that it was also making cuts elsewhere so it can invest in other business priorities. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is, this is, this is something AI. I've had a problem with. Is it, it going to replace it? AI replace it? So what did you spend as a company? time relocating those individuals within your organization so they can find a job that's sufficient. Are you kidding? What, where, what do you smoke? <laughs> well, I, I, just, I want some of that. Okay. Well, I, I'm just saying that wouldn't it make sense that you find a place within your organization to move them into? I, I'll tell you, I worked at a company, Microsoft, and they laid off a lot of people during the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, but they would spend a lot of time, their HR department, I give them a lot of credit. That's why I don't pick on them as much as other people say I should on stuff that they do. But they would actually spend time if they were shutting down a division or changing a division's focus, that they would actually internally look for jobs for this individual to apply for. They had a whole process. Oh, you this, would go in. What's that? This is this is corporate America. So where, you get, where you get so laid off by email, Google, and where you get where you get laid off before Christmas, Wizards of the Coast. You know, there's okay, but should, shouldn't you spend as a company the time and due diligence of trying? It to would find be these it would jobs? be nice to believe that the the company is actually a caring individual, which is what people want to do. Yeah, it's not true. I just I just really it, it just really gets gets me upset when I yeah, see well, so many. Open if you want jobs. if you want to, if you want to call me a pessimist, you can call me a pessimist about that because I really dislike how corporations are run and how we how we deal with them and allow them to do the things that they do. Okay, well, that was my little that was my little nugget. So I'm going to rant. I'll rant about it for like hours. So we got we we, we got our post uh, show wrap up so we get to hear uh, Mike talk about Amazon and corporate greed. And we're going to be excited about that. All right, now let's go to our pick of the day whiskey tasting. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, Mark, what are we tasting for our whiskey tasting? We are tasting the Distillerium Cask and Spin Triticale Batch 1 from Yakima, Washington. It is straight Triticale as a classification, aged four years with 116 proof, 95% Triticale and 5% malted barley in the mash bill, going for $48. 48 bucks. Oh, there it is. 48 bucks. Whoo. Under 50. Yeah, under, under 50. 50 bucks. That's why I, you like it. Well, I I, I don't know. I'm giving it a thumbs down. It tastes like unicorn pee. Really? <laughs> oh, for unicorn day, you not like it. Really? No. Okay. Well, I don't think. Bodie, I don't think if you're Bodie. filling in for Mark, listen, what, what would listen. you say? I'm just giving it a thumbs up because he's giving it a thumbs up and I've liked what I've tasted so far. The beginning, I did not like. You know, I okay. saw your that, face th- when you, you drink. Yeah, you it was it was it a was, sour tasting. It was but, all over the board. Mm-hmm. Okay. I did not like it. 
But as I went throughout the show, getting a little bit more buzzed. Yeah, you're buzzed right <laughs> now. Honey. That's why you're giving the thumbs up. Let's just let's just let's just be clear. I, I liked it from the beginning. I let's just be clear. If it, so. if it was about how I feel, I'd thumbs probably up. give it a lump. Under fifty so bucks. Up too. Unique taste. Nice taste. I could sip this. Absolutely taken care of. It. All right. Well. Well. We want to thank all of our listeners that were a part of our show today. Remember, you can always go to our website at techtimeradio.com. Click on the be a caller and ask us a question on technology in our talkback recording system. It was an honor to be the host of today's show. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you from all of us at tech time radio. Remember mums, the word have a safe and fantastic week.